enemy came up against your home. The enemy came up against your children. The enemy came up against your name. The enemy came up against your character. You will win, win. You will win, win. The enemy came up against your health. The enemy came up against your finances. Your finances. The enemy came up against your vision. The enemy came up against your business. What it looks like you will win. Yeah. 
dare say the thing and it comes to pass, except by him. Ha! Everything attached to me will. Everything attached to me will. My win a season. It's 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 my win a season. You're not going to carry you. It's my win a season. You're not going to carry you. It's my win a season. 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 Everything attached to me wins. Everything attached to me wins. upon shall prosper. Amen. Victory all around you. Amen. In your family, victory. Amen. In your business, victory. Amen. In your office, victory. Amen. Everywhere, victory, victory. Amen. In the church, victory. Amen. Even in the nation, victory. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. Before I preach, I want to use this opportunity to appreciate everybody for last Sunday. The days before the service were very challenging. And every one of you rose up to the challenge or the challenges. And we had a good program. Clap for yourselves. Some people are not clapping. Okay, praise God. I want to appreciate all our leaders. You did well. God bless you in Jesus' name. Choir, you did exceptionally well. God bless you. Praise God. Our ushers, the addressing on that day was something else. Praise God. Before that day, the prayer rooms were on fire. And by that day, we saw the effect of prayer. Prayer department, the Lord bless you all. So I want to appreciate everybody, all our workers, every member and all those who contributed to help us offset our bills. The Lord will increase you. Just like the choir told us this morning, you are a winner. Praise God. Let's bow our heads to pray. Father, thank you this morning. I appreciate you because I know you are here already. It's my prayer that that which you have proposed, you will bring to pass in this place. And bless every one of us as we hear your voice. Use me again as your instrument to bless your church. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Praise God. In Romans chapter 8, I'll read from verse 12 to 17. 
Romans chapter 8 from verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. 13. For if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify, to mortify that means to kill the deeds of the body, what did he say will happen? You shall live. Meaning it's a responsibility to bring our bodies under subjection to God. He says we should mortify, we should kill the evil deeds of the body so that they will not be named among us. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. 15. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry. What are we crying? Abba, Father. This is the result of confident relationship between the believer and God that goes beyond religion into something much more personal, father-son relationship. Verse 16, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also, what do you see there? that we may be also glorified together. Praise God. I'm speaking briefly this morning on the topic I titled The Sons of God. The Sons of God. This has become very necessary because as the days go by, Many in the church are losing commitment, are losing focus. Whereas people should go to hell from the world, but many will be going to hell from the church because we are losing our consecrations. We are forgetting why we have relationship with God, the purpose of our calling. In those days, when a believer dies, those that are yet alive, they declare he has gone to heaven because of the testimonies he left behind. But today, it's no longer easy to hear that somebody dies and you say, may he so rest in peace. Because you cannot account for his or her life. So many secrets. And it's becoming too much. So I'm speaking this morning on this topic. The sons of God. That we may know the things expected of us. Brethren, to have sons, God gave his only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son. And the Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So to have sons, God gave his only begotten son. The purpose of being born again in Christ is for us to be translated into sons from children translated from son I mean from into sons from children but many are just happy being children but God wants you to come up to become sons if you read Isaiah 9 6 the word of the Lord says unto us a child is born. When he was born as a child, oh, angels announced his birth. They sang redemption story. But he didn't remain a child. He moved on to be a son. He says unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. What is the difference between the child and the son? The child is immature. The son is mature to the point of responsibility and having ability to go into receiving delegation from the father. So he says a son is given to us and he says the government shall be upon his shoulders. Not the child, the son. When the child grew up to become a son, the government came upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. As a child, you are under tutors. But when you become a son, you begin to exercise the powers of the Father. So it's important we understand that though many people are claiming today that they are children of God, not many grow on to become sons. If you look at John 1 in verse 12, John 1 in verse 12, the word of God says very clearly, as many as receive him, to them gave he, what is he giving them? Power. To what? To become the sons of God. The moment of receiving him, you became a child of God. But he is going to give you power to progress into sonship. And my prayer this morning is that all of us will grow. All of us will develop and translate into sons in the name of Jesus Christ. I will limit myself today just to sons of God. By next Sunday, I'll be coming with another version. For you to understand that it's not enough to be a child of God. It's not enough. If they say there is danger and you just move from where you are some few steps and you wait there. If the danger gets to where you were before because you are not far away, the danger is very likely to see catch up with you. But if you go away very far, that is the gap between children and sons. I believe God by his grace we shall live, we shall grow, we shall develop and become the sons God designed us to be in the name of Jesus Christ. There are privileges for sons. Number one, sons of God are spiritual. Sons are spiritual. He said we should mortify the deeds of the body. 
so that we can be spiritual. He said we are debtors, not to the flesh, no, to live any longer thereby. We are debtors to live to the spirit. So sons of God are spiritual. How did they become spiritual? They have been schooled and exercised in spiritual things. They've gathered knowledge. They've gathered experience so they can stand out. Take a look at Romans 8 in verse 14. Romans 8, 14. The word of God makes it clear that for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, what did he say? They are the sons of God. Led by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God takes over in your life. You are not living by the dictates of the flesh or the carnal world around you. You know whom you have believed. You know your calling and you've made up your mind to live up to divine expectations. So you depend on the Holy Spirit. On the Holy Spirit. Are there not many here this morning who claim to be children of God, believers, but you do not know how the Spirit of God speaks to his children. You do not know how the Spirit of God guides the children of God. And the Bible says, sons of God are guided, led by the Spirit of God. Why will the Spirit of God lead them? So that they can be spiritual. Every action, every decision, every choice they make, spiritual, not carnal. And I pray this morning, every one of us grow on to become sons in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, sons of God, they fear God. They live in the fear of God. If you look at verse 15, for example, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father, we live not to fear the world. The spirit in us is not the spirit of bondage. We have grown out of bondage. If you claim to be a believer, but you do not obey God, you do not do his will. There are issues in your life that declares you are inconsistent in your work, with God, it means you do not have the fear of God. You fear the world. You fear men. You fear women. You fear situations. Not God. When you fear God, his glory becomes your desire. And he says, not the spirit of bondage, again to fear. Meaning, before we came to Christ, fear crippled us. Now we are in Christ. We are still living in fear, not in assurance. If you are not living in obedience, the devil has every right to cripple your faith because you are not showing marks of development. In verse 16, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are God's own children. Then in verse 17, he says, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Why will you suffer with him? It is because you refuse 
to dance to the tune of the world around you. It is because you refuse to please the world around you. It is because you decided and determined to stand out. A shining light in our world. And I pray God, every one of us will live in the fear of God. I didn't hear your amen well. Because that's what will develop us to the point we become heirs of God. Do you, you know what it means to become a heir? When you hear heir apparent to the throne, it means this person is going to be the next king after his father. We are heirs of God to inherit everything God has. Joint heirs with Christ because we will inherit with Christ. May your place not be vacant. May none other take over your inheritance. Be a son. Sons of God are spiritual. Sons of God fear God. Number three, sons of God enjoy grace. When it is grace, it's no more by your power. It's no more by your ability. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, in verse 33, the Bible says, great grace was upon them all. Great grace was upon them all. With great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. When it is grace, it's not your power anymore. It means God has taken over. When we become sons, God takes over in our lives. The things we do, the things we say, are no longer ours. The Holy Ghost takes over. And I pray for you this morning, great grace. Characterize your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Number four, sons of God, they bear spiritual fruits. What are those fruits? Galatians 5 from verse 22 tells us, Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, endurance, temperance, meekness. All those are wonderful fruits. The fruit of the Spirit. We bear spiritual fruit. But I want to ask this morning, spiritual tenderness, is it there? Many of us have forgotten that without him we can do nothing. And we take to ourselves the glory that should have been his. I want you to know when Moses began to lose the virtues of spirituality, he lost leadership. God told him how water will come for the children of Israel to drink. But Moses was so angry with the people, he came and he said, shall we give you water? If it's you, where is grace? Where is God? Shall we give you water, you rebels? Come and let me give you water. In the process, he struck the rock against God's command of speaking to the rock. God allowed water to come out. But the person by whom that miracle took place lost his place. And God said to him, Moses, your leadership is over. Why? He said, I've done everything. The people saw miracle. He said, no, you did not honor me. You did not honor me. And I want to say this morning, without you being spiritual and bearing the fruit of the spirit, you cannot honor God. It's not your gra gra. It is grace. It's not your smartness. It is grace. It's not your connection. It is grace. Take away grace. Every other thing will fail around you. So I want to let you know this morning that sons of God, they bear spiritual fruit. You see grace in manifestation, in love, in tenderness, in meekness, and it affects everything about them. And I pray that God 
has called us to move from children to become church. Who this morning? I didn't hear you well. Sons. Sons of God, number five. They have divine authority and power. Jesus said, I give unto you power. In another place, he said, whatsoever you buy, I give you authority, whatsoever you bind on earth, what did he say will happen? Bound in heaven. There is no reason why you, a believer, will make proclamations in the name of Jesus and you are still waiting for months to see when it will come to pass. That's not God in action. So I pray this morning that your authority will come back. Oh my God, I didn't hear you. The power will come back. There is no way you can put Satan where he belongs if you are not exercising authority and exercising power. You know children. Children do not exercise authority, do not exercise power. Where the housemaid says, sit there, the child will sit. But the day comes, the child begins to realize, I'm a son in this house. And the maid says, sit down there. Say, why should I sit down here? Daddy says, I should sit here. Praise God. Language has changed because with sonship comes authority. With authority comes power. He said, you are going to take beans this afternoon. He said, no, I want rice. Beans have been prepared, but he has assumed sonship. So he's now making declarations and people are dancing to it because that's the hair in the house. Your place must not be taken over. But when you have not lived up to it, you cannot assume it. That's the problem with many of us. Because we are not living up to it, we cannot assume it. When we assume, the devil will not obey. The situations will not obey. But I pray God this morning, we will live up to expectation. I didn't hear your amen well. Number six, the sons of God, they shine in life. Jesus said we are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. He said, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We are no more children. Let's put away childish things and let us shine to the glory of our God. The glory of our God. Many are proclaiming, I'm a Christian, I am this, I am that. But not many are shining. Not many are shining. And because not many are shining, we gather together to pray. We do not make him part. But God forbid, from today it's over. Because suns are rising in the name of Jesus Christ. We shine. How do we shine? By our good works. By the characters of Christ exhibited in us. And I'm believing you will shine. Let me hear you say I will shine. Isaiah said arise, shine for your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Which means when you are shining it is the result of God's glory upon you. When you are not shining, you are lacking in glory. How can you say you are of God when there is no glory? No glory. When the glory is there, it will show in your visage. It will show in your comportment. It will show in your language. It will show all over the glory. And I pray we must shine. I said we must shine. Sons of God will not only shine, sons of God are true ambassadors of Christ. True ambassadors of Christ. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 in verse 12. 
1 Timothy chapter 4, in verse 12, what do we see? Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. I want to let you know this morning that when Jesus was going away, what he left as a name and title for the believers was disciples. Disciples. Today, what we should have been called should be what? Disciples of Christ. But how come Christianity, Christians, it was in Antioch that the unbelievers observed the believers, their attitude, their comportment, their language, way of life. They said, these must be Christians. They are like Christ. Praise God. Like Christ, Christians. Nigerian, because you are from where? Talk to me now. Christian, because you are from Christ. How can you be from Christ and be accepted as that when there is no resemblance? If a mother comes with a son and says, this is my son. And then you know the mother, you know the father, you look at two of them and there is no iota of resemblance in this child. You start wondering what happened. Am I correct? That if it's truly the fruit of these two, there should be signs of resemblance. It was the unbelievers that gave us this name, Christians. Why? They saw Christ in the believers in Antioch. They saw his nature. They saw his lifestyle. They saw his activities in them. And they said, these ones must be Christians. Brothers and sisters, that is where we must be. People around you and me must be able to testify that truly we are the representatives of Jesus Christ. And he says, let no man despise thy youth. Let nobody despise you. But be thou an example to the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Brethren, we are the ambassadors of Christ. Everywhere you find yourself, show them whom Jesus is. When we were converted, young believers, there was this song we used to sing. It says, everybody ought to know, 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 everybody ought to know whom Jesus is. Whom Jesus is. Praise God. It was not just only by our preaching and telling them that Jesus saves. They saw Jesus in us. If you are not looking like him, you cannot become a son. If you are not a son, you cannot be an heir. If you are not an heir, you have no place in the kingdom of God. I pray that this morning every one of us will examine our lives and ask God to have his way in us in the name of Jesus Christ. Sons will dwell in glory with Christ. 
And Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. When I am true, I will come back and collect you. That where I am in glory, there you will be also. Not long from now, he is coming. In 1 John chapter 3 from verse 1, he says, <laughs> Now are we the sons of God. But it does not yet appear what we shall be. But when we see him, we shall see him. We shall be like him. We shall see him as he is. When we see him, we will be like him. Are those signs there now? It's not going to be automatic on that day. If you have been a liar all your life, you will not speak through that day for the first time. Please. It's not now. Let's examine ourselves. Why do I need to be a son? That's what Christ died to make us become. That's why God sent his son into the world. Sons are those he will empower. Sons are those he will send forth. And the world is waiting for sons to come up. And by the grace of God, you will not be a disappointment. I will not be a disappointment. We are the heads of God, joint heads with Christ. On that day, your portion will be shown you. My portion will be shown me. Nothing as good and as great when we start reigning with Christ in his kingdom. I want to let you know, we are not into any kind of game. This thing is real. This is a serious business, serious matter. I want to encourage you, grow up from a child, be a son. And let God be pleased with you. You know what he says? He said, this is my beloved son. In him I am what? Well pleased. That should be said of every one of us. If you do not end that testimony here, you may not be anywhere later with him. My prayer is that all of us will have a change of mind and allow God to have his way in us in Jesus' name. Rise up on your feet. My encouragement to you this morning is move on from a child to becoming who? I didn't hear you well. Son. Son. That's the design of God. And we shall become sons. He says, if sons, then heirs. Heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. Now are we the sons of God. Not later, now. If you have not become here, you will never become again. The church is God's workshop where all his panabiting work, spraying work, redesigning work is going on getting his children set and ready and this money is saying he wants you to grow on to become a son that's where you can exercise authority and the world of today needs you to exercise authority the way people die these days is funny if you are not a son it's a pity. So I pray that every one of us will look away from every other thing and say, God, make me a son. Help me to grow on to become a son. Pour grace upon me to go on to become a son. And by the grace of God, you will be a son. Help me move to somebody. Say, neighbor, grow on to become a son of God. That is the calling now. That is the challenge now. Praise God. Unto us a child is born. Unto us who now? A son is given. And when he became a son, he said, the government shall be on his shoulder. That's the position of responsibility. 
our sons we bear responsibility as sons we exhibit the graces of our father everywhere we go authority flows and I pray for you you are part of this vision climb up higher take your place and reign in life in the name of Jesus Christ you will reign I say you will reign tap your chest and tell yourself I will reign in life I didn't hear you well through our Lord Jesus Christ that is the calling shall we pray he made you his child that he could make you a son You are still toying with sin. You are not mortifying the deeds of the body. You cannot be an ambassador of Christ because the world will not see Christ in you. Yet, Christ in us is the hope of glory. In Jesus' name we pray. I pray this morning that grace will take a new course in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Great grace. So that henceforth we are living as sons, not just as children, in the name of Jesus Christ. May the world around you see Jesus. May your life tell the story of Jesus. May the power of Christ be resident in you. May authority manifest through you. Everywhere you go, may the beauty of Jesus radiate in the name of Jesus Christ. Let people testify like they testified in Antioch that these ones are Christians. Let them testify that they can see Christ in you, see Christ in me, see Christ in us in the name of Jesus Christ. And whatever will reduce our words before Christ and before the world, I pray that this day they are subject to the cross in the name of Jesus Christ. Let God have his way in our lives so that henceforth we are pillars of progress to the glory of his name in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you, move from being a child of God Become a son of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.